Hi, welcome to the online video course, Understanding Doctrine, an Introduction to Christian Theology. My name is Chris Lint. I am a pastor at Celebration Community Church in Celebration, Florida, and I will be your instructor throughout this class. One unique challenge with video courses like this is I don't get to interact personally with you or answer immediate questions of clarification if you have them. So I want to encourage you to reach out to me or another pastor or teacher here at Celebration Community Church over email, and we'd be happy to correspond with you about any questions that you might have. You can email us at info at 44life.com. In this first session, I simply want to introduce the overall goal and structure of the course and outline some of the object objectives that I have for you as you watch and learn. So let's start with those objectives. There are at least five things I hope this course will achieve in your life. First, as you watch this class and interact with some of the questions I'll be giving you along the way, you're going to become familiar with the basics of biblical doctrine and orthodox Protestant theology. A couple of things to know about this objective. This is an introductory course. A lot more could be said about each and every subject that we're going to tackle. So if I don't mention a specific area of doctrine, don't assume that it's not important or that I don't believe it. We can only do so much in our time together. But if you've never studied doctrine or theology before, much of this material may be new to you, and I hope it will provide a good foundation. If you've taken a theology class before, I hope that this course will refresh your memory and provide some jumping off points for further study. Also, the vast majority of this course will cover theological concepts that the church as a whole has believed and confessed from the time of the early church through the church fathers, through the medieval scholastic period, and then through the Protestant Reformation. Second, I hope that by taking this course, you will grow in your appreciation for the men and women of past centuries who thought long and hard to articulate these doctrines and concepts, at times even being martyred for their commitment to defend God's truth revealed in the scriptures. And while this is not a course in church history or historical theology, I need you to know that the content of what I am teaching is not new with me. We stand on the shoulders of theological giants, pastors, scholars, missionaries, monks, and others who have come before us. And while theology must be reapplied in every generation and contextualized to every local church, the content of the doctrine confessed has not changed. It's old and time-tested and solid so that we might build our lives on it. Third, third objective for this course, as you engage with the material, I hope that you will better understand and more joyfully embrace how God has shaped life in this world, how he has created you in his image with particular skills and abilities, and that you will find your identity in him, in his gracious redemption, and in the mission to which he has recruited you. Fourth, I hope that spending focused time in God's truth will transform you in every sphere of your life. That's what God wants it to do. How you think about everything that your desires and deepest commitments will change to be more God-centered, and that all of this would spill outward in your actions, not just your personal spiritual habits, but the way that you relate to others and the way that you live publicly in the church and in the world. Pray that that would be the case in your life through this course. Finally, fifth objective, and this one is the most important. At the end of this course, I want you to love God more deeply. Not as you would want him to be or as, as you would have him to be, but that you would love him as he is and as he's revealed himself to be, our triune God from all eternity. And when we live, love God with all that we are, with all of our heart and with all of our soul and with all of our strength, it draws us into worship where we joyfully declare his greatness and his glory to the world. 
Isn't it exciting to think that 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 might happen for you through this course? Again, pray that that would be the case. I want to talk just for a moment about the flow and the structure of this course. Most classes on theology and doctrine cover the same subjects, often in roughly the same order. And this course is no different. So here are some of the areas of doctrine that we will introduce in this course. We'll begin after a few introductory sessions by talking about the doctrine of the triune God, how we can know him, the fact that he is, that he exists, and how we can even begin to describe an incomprehensible God. We'll discuss the Trinity as well as the so-called attributes of God. The Word of God. Here we will examine the nature of Scripture, how we should think about Scripture in comparison to human traditions, experience, and reason, and we'll talk just briefly about the proper interpretation of Scripture. The works of God. This includes creation, God's providence, miracles, prayer, supernatural beings like angels and demons, and the problem of evil. The covenants of God section will focus on the way in which God relates to his creation at various points in history and how it all points us forward to Jesus, the Messiah. The image of God section deals with the doctrine of humanity, what it means for us to be God's image bearers, the nature and makeup of humans. And here is where we will also talk about sin, what our problem is, and our need of salvation. In the person of Christ section, we focus on the incarnation and who Jesus is. For example, the fact that he fulfills the Old Testament uh, offices of prophet, priest, and king. Then we move to the work of Christ, his earthly ministry, his atoning death, the resurrection, the ascension, and his current reign. In the Spirit of God section, we'll talk not only about the Holy Spirit and his unique work, but how the Spirit unites us to Christ and applies the finished work of Christ's redemption to us in the full package that we often call salvation. So here's where we will discuss conversion, and faith and repentance, justification, sanctification, adoption, and glorification. It all happens in conjunction with the Spirit's ministry. The people of God refers first and foremost to the doctrine of the church, church government and offices, practices and ordinances, but also our mission as subjects of God's kingdom in Christ throughout the world and the call to church unity as a crucial witness in the world. Finally, at the end of our course, we'll examine the new creation of God the ultimate aims and purposes for all of God's work and activity in Christ and by the Spirit in history and in your life. So this includes what we call the already and not yet tension, death and the intermediate state, heaven, the millennium, the second coming of Christ, final judgment, and the new heavens and the new earth. A few final remarks about the course before we move into our next lecture. We've chosen to record this entire course as a longer series of shorter videos so that it is easier for you, for you to, to keep your place and to digest all of this information in smaller, bite-sized chunks. The slides will also be made available for you. If you would like to read something to go along with these lectures, I would recommend two shorter introductory books on theology. First is the book, Everyone's a Theologian by R.C. Sproul. The second is by Wayne Grudem, entitled Christian Beliefs, 20 Basics Every Christian Should Know. You can pick both of these books up just about anywhere online. Finally, I will end each video with a practical closing question and or a challenge that I would encourage you to think about or to do before you watch the next video. And so we'll end this first lecture with one of each. So the question, look back at the list of topics that we'll be introducing in this course. Which topic are you most excited about? And which one do you know the least about? And the challenge challenge is this. 
Pray through the list of course objectives that I gave you and ask the Lord to do all of these things in you for your good and for his glory. In our next section, we will talk about what doctrine and theology are and where they fit alongside other important disciplines and areas of study in the Christian life.